Now we're going to look a little at the future of what's going on with big data. First thing we're going to look at is hardware. One, the hardware is always getting better. The disks are getting more uh, capacity. CPUs are getting faster. There's more and more cores, which makes parallelism a little easier. Uh, one of the things that's happening is more and more people are thinking about SSDs or solid state disks. There are some limitations to them. There's a write limit that's based on, on physics. There's um, the expense, they're, they're much more expensive than, than regular disks, but their prices are going down and they can be a real game changer when performance matters more than anything else. So there's something to keep your, your eye on and they might be a, a, an important part of what you might want to do with your platform. The next thing is compression. Compression comes up because the kind of conventional wisdom about databases is that they are disk bound and that there's spare CPU cycles. What we've been hearing from the people who've been testing is that that isn't necessarily true, that when you do compression, it depends on the data, how much it lends itself to compression, and just the way you've got your system configured, how much CPU is handling how much disk. We actually do think compression will be used, but we think it'll be light compression algorithms that don't compress the data very much, but don't require very much CPU and work very quickly. The next thing is real time. Uh, a lot of people think about real time data as creating significant competitive advantages, and in certain circumstances, that's very true. A couple ways to handle that real-time data are to use streams or wavelets. These are uh, designs that take the data as it comes in and tries to quickly make sense of it and put in data structures that can be used. In the case of wavelets, these can be approximations. and You've got to decide whether approximate data values are good enough for, for what you're trying to accomplish. The last thing is a, a, a newfangled data structure called the triadic continuum. This also can handle real-time data and fast data processing. In fact, it's continually making uh, kind of probability estimates of what's in the data as the data gets loaded. And this is something we're keeping our eye on. It's still in a pretty early phase. But just to wrap things up, we've talked about a couple of technologies and some of what's going on with databases. What we think is going to be on to handle big data is you're going to use a mix of technologies. It's going to depend on the type of data, the skill set of your engineers and analysts and consumers of data, your budgets and so forth, but that you probably will be mixing things together based on ability and on your desire to be engaged with the data. And that's something we'd recommend is that when you can do something to engage more of the organization's data, become more of a data-driven company, embrace that experimental approach where nothing is going to stay static, but you're going to keep trying new things with the data. We think that what can happen is that you actually turn data into more of a solution than a problem. If you want to learn more, we do have a big data report that goes into more details about the technology choices. And on the next slide, you'll be able to see the URL information to order that report.